What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna to be checking out and doing a quick overview on this beautiful 50 inch Star Trek virtual pinball machine. Look at, wait until you hear the toys on this thing. Look at the topper, it's levitating. Let's check it out. <laughs> Alright guys, you know the drill for not following me on all the socials. What are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Click the link tree down below. It brings you to this beautiful, simple app thingamabob and the website and all that. And it's like, hey, it shows you what I recently did and the quick stuff and quick jumps to virtual pinball builds and all the stuff that I've done and the socials. That is the big thing. Be sure to also like and subscribe. I don't want to sound like that cliche YouTuber, but apparently pushing the like button helps. Somehow, I, I don't I don't know. Anyway, be sure to follow me on all those socials. You would see everything from applying the vinyl, building the cabinets, wiring these things, the kind of hassles and the builds and the stress that I get when I build these machines. Why are you not following? Why? <laughs> but enough of the social media plugins. I always say them in my videos, so if you are a regular returning person, thank you for putting up with them. But I have to remember, and you have to also remember that there are new people that are tuning in and I post stuff and people go like, whoa, what is that? And then, uh, you know, they come to the videos and this might be their first video. So I appreciate you sticking around and listening to it. But enough of that. On this one today, we're going to be doing an overview on this 50 inch Star Trek themed virtual pinball machine. We're going to go through the basics, PC specs, screen specs, the toys, the surround sound feedback, the topper. We're gonna go through basic stuff. I'm gonna chew your ear off a little bit, just a little bit. But in a separate video, I will do a full in-depth detailed video. We'll talk about artwork, how we came up with the artwork, you know, the artwork, the customer supplied the pictures versus what I had in mind. And we're gonna go in-depth, in detail. We'll even open up the rear. We'll take a look at some wiring and all that. This pin, it's, I love it. It is a beautiful pin, not to mention I personally have a 50 inch pinball, so it's kind of great to see like, you know, somebody else likes a bigger type of style virtual pinball machine like me. Uh, all in all, this is a beautiful machine. Shout out to the customer, awesome dude. If it wasn't for him, we would not. I personally, even Project Canvas pin that you guys saw, this pin next to me, I would not even have entertained or kind of looked at the world of LED matrices and the addressable LEDs. Not to mention he is the one that introduced me to a 50 inch 120 hertz display. So customer is an awesome dude. He is in Maine. Um, I'm basically going to be taking this. I'm going to help him out. We're going to meet past the city. So I'm going to load this up in my truck. He's actually going to come down to me. We'll meet at a mutual area and then drop off the pin. We'll do an exchange basically from my truck to his car. So awesome dude. Enough of that. Let's talk about this virtual pinball machine. So to start with the overview, let's talk about the screen specs and sizes. So this is running the LG 50 inch QNED display 4K with 120 hertz. Back glass, back box over here. We do have the 32 inch 1080p ViewSonic bezel list that I have on my personal build. And we do have a 17 inch DMD display. As far as like the cabinet design and all that, this mimics a wide body pin. As far as the back box here, I am imitating the Stern style DMD slash back box. We're going to be talking about the back box and such later on, but because I mentioned Stern style DMD and back box, some people might be like, I don't understand Vic, what are you talking about? Basically, if you take a look right here and then you look up a current Stern pin, such as Godzilla or Foo Fighters, this right here, this DMD area is mimicking the Stern design. Basically, it's a mesh grill Stern. I don't know if they are doing it or they people mod it, but sometimes you do see LEDs in the speaker grills as you can see here, sometimes you don't, but basically making it the Stern style DMD is basically this hexagonal mesh to it. This is the third time I'm filming this part because I just tend to ramble. I have to remember that this is an overview. So again, excuse me for being kind of quick. We're going to go overview. This is the overview, okay? So let's talk about the PC specs on this. This is running an i7. 16 gigs of RAM with two terabyte M.2 SSD for the boot. 
with an additional one terabyte SSD. And as far as the graphics card, this is running the RTX 3080. Beautiful. Now, like I said, I filmed this a couple of times. I'm trying to focus and not talk too much, but let's talk about the toys. The amount of toys in this is the most I ever, ever done. It's insane because I had to get two LED whizzes and I had to get two same smart boards to get all the toys working and functioning and such. Shout out again to the customer. Basically, there are some toys that I have never done before and the customer gives me the opportunity. He goes, hey, big man, if you're down to try it, I'm down to put like my faith in you. So shout out to the customer for that. There is a lot of toys. There is so much toys. Like I said, I needed two LED whizzes and two Saint Smart Boards. So start with the basics. Obviously, this has 10 24 volt solenoids. I do always have my personal three channel RGB flashes, which is the police light that I've done on my build and all the other pins. Those are underneath the cabinet. So that's utilizing the police flashers and the strobes. This also does have the shaker motor with the adjustable controller there. I do have also the RGB flipper and magnet saves. As you can see, we do have RGB underglow. That's standard RGB underglow. I didn't do addressable. I feel like the adjustable is going underneath. It's just, it's too, it's too kind of crazy. We obviously do have the DOF controlled buttons in the front, such as the coin start, extra ball, exit, and the launch ball. You're gonna see me cut a little bit because I'm reading the list, so I apologize. We obviously have the LED matrix, the side rails, the speaker panels, and two LED rings on this. We also do have obviously the analog plunger, nudge and tilt because of that KL25Z board. As far as the sound setup on this, we have the Z533 2.1 sound system. So I have left and right, the speakers right here, that subwoofer cut out in the base of the cabinet. But he also does have surround sound feedback with a kick. We have basically our four exciters. That's the back and the front on the side walls for like the ball roll. He does also have two Dayton Audio bass shakers for thump for the bass kind of like the sound that I put it to like really the music that's in the base of the cabinet and that has its own separate amp. Surround sound feedback alone has three amps. Front, rear, Base. So as far as other add-ons that I have personally never done before, he does have the five RGB flasher bar right into the back glass, and you don't see it. This does have a knocker, 48 volt knocker, 49, 48, one of those two. It has its own separate power supply. When that thing kicks, poof, it's insane. And now the little details, the icing on the cake. I'm gonna mention the cherry on top, but let's talk about the icing. We do have Eric, Big E Productions, supplying us the custom side rails and lockdown bar. Not to mention, we obviously have tempered glass. And the cherry, the cherry on top, is probably the biggest eye-catching thing on this cabinet. That is the Collector's Edition Certificate of Authenticity Star Trek Levitating Command Insignia. That is beautiful. That is a custom topper. Customers supply that. I'm gonna be talking about the power on that, how to give it its own power, its own specific input. That is the Levitating Chevron. Shout out to the customer to let me know the exact name on it. Beautiful, it is a collectible. He's got his whole certificate of authenticity. He'll get all that. That probably that seals it, man. That is the cherry on top. It is awesome. Not to mention, like, when you're playing and you kind of nudge, you kind of see it shake. Very cool. Awesome. Now, I want to make a quick comment about that beautiful topper. This is actually very funny. Me and the customer, we actually had a funny thing going on, and it kind of actually almost put me in a panic. But I'm going to talk more about it, and I'm going to show you in depth that whole topper. But... This right here may or may not fit in the customer's designated area. Right now, where that topper is sitting, we are at 83 inches tall from the ground. I did mention to the customer though, you know, you could always adjust the leg levers and drop a little bit, but the way that thing stands right now, it may or may not fit where he wants it, but 
I'm gonna go full in depth. It's I'm gonna show you why I have it at that height. Yes, that could actually be lowered. In the next video, I will to explain and talk about what I'm talking about. But what a beautiful it's a beautiful touch. Ah, uh, he thought of it while mid-build. He's like, Vic, I found this. Do you think we could incorporate it? And I'm like, go ahead, dude. Send it over to me. Now, honestly, Doff doesn't control that at all. It just always stays on. It is always lit. Beautiful. There's a lot to talk about with this pin. I had so much fun. Customer is an awesome dude. I had so much fun building this. You'll, we'll go really hard in depth on this. But we'll keep going with some basic overview and stuff. And we'll do some gameplay. Let's talk about the artwork on this. So again, as you can see, it is a Star Trek themed virtual pinball machine. Customers supplied me a bunch of images. We had a lot. Always, every time when it comes to artwork, and I'm, I'm perfectly down for it, is A-OK. -okay. Uh, usually customers send me like a ton of images and then it winds up like being just too chaotic and then we always kind of bring it down a little bit. But it's very cool. I personally, I don't know much about Star Trek. The customer was also making fun of me. Uh, a little bit because I don't really know too much. Uh, you know, I only know Spock. Everybody knows Spock. <laughs> but the other characters, I don't really know their names and such. Um, but it's very cool. He had a really cool take. If you look very carefully, and again, I'm going to apologize to the customer uh, and his friends and all the Star Trek people because I don't really know exactly it. But on the left, it's kind of like, I don't, I'm, I'm going to call it. It's, no, it's not because I, I have a Star Trek table here. It's like, on the left side, it's like the OG Star Trek. Like, that's the Spock that I know. So if you look very carefully, he does have the Enterprise in orbit. He actually, we had to grab that from a YouTube kind of link picture. And then as far as the back box, we have the actual characters. So we have Captain Kirk, Spock, and I don't know the girl's name. Don't, <laughs> don't flame me. But it's, it's kind of a cool trend. So the left side is... I'm gonna call it the OG. And then the right side here is like the newer cast and all that. So as you can see on the right side, we have like the newer generation, the newer cast and such, along with also the Enterprise. So it's pretty cool. You basically got the Enterprise on both. In the longer video, I'm gonna show you, I actually have another side panel. I'll actually show you, like I have another vinyl piece because the customer, we were going back and forth. We couldn't, he couldn't really decide on which exact print he wanted but we settled on this i'll talk about that later on but it's it's very cool and then now as far as the front of the cabinet it's a i guess like the in between like this is the og this is the current gen and it's like the in between so let's take a look at the front so now in the front you can see again same thing enterprise it's different he also has this very cool border that he found awesome and they said you do have the cast here so it's basically like different generations. It's very cool. Also, obviously, custom is custom. I do have the custom button inserts. We have engage for start. And then he's got basically three logos. What's very cool is like the exit button. It's kind of like a teleportation kind of thing. Very cool. I'll obviously show a little splash screen on that. Uh, it's awesome. It's very cool. The other big thing while you're there, you can see that the panel here, the buttons, he actually requested them to be a little bit more spaced out. Whereas if you go see my Hogwarts pin, they were very much closer. Um, but all in all, artwork on this, beautiful. And then the last little piece of artwork is the DMD panel here. As you can see, there's not much artwork. Um, you know, I do lay a very big piece of artwork. It's actually this galaxy. Uh, I'll actually show you the back. I forgot the rear of it. It is fully wrapped, 360 wrapped, so I will show you the rear. Uh, but when it comes to these DMD panels, as you can see, you know, we do have three big gaping holes, and then not to mention we do have the flasher bar above. So, you know, you might be saying, why did you even put vinyl there? You still have to put vinyl. You know, I, I want to always do that. But if you're in person, I know definitely you can't see it in camera, but in person you can see it's kind of like a starry galaxy. Uh, very cool. He's also at... Very hint of it, there are two chevrons here, uh, but all in all, solid artwork as far as the DMD. Let's take a look at the rear. So now take a look at the rear of it. You do have your three exhaust fans. The panel here I don't have screwed in. There are two screws that go here. He did also put this quote. Apparently it is not a Star Trek quote, but it does say, no matter where you go, there you are. I believe he told me that was from another show or a movie. But all in all, very cool. While you're there, you could see the left panel here. 
So I do have my DOF switch. This kills all the 12 volt, 24 volt toys, such as the, shot, the shaker motor, the solenoids, the knocker, and such. This one right here is for the LED matrix. You obviously have your power here. And the other big thing was this right here. This is the separate power input going to the topper. Again, I had to think of everything on this and just, it's gotta be clean. Everything's clean. And now like I said, you do have the PC here. So this does come off. We have the PC here. I will obviously tidy up the wiring and such, but you don't see it there. We have the amps, there's two amps here. I have the Z533 control knob on the right. We have the shaker motor knob here. And on the right side is the other amp for the bass thump. So cool. And again, custom panels. This right here is gonna keep the PC secured in transit. It's just awesome. It's, it's very awesome. Not to mention, like I said before, when it comes to these door panels, you know, it's a lot of like little tiny cuts and stuff, especially when it came to the back box. But all in all, it is beautiful. So now we can take a look at it in the dark. Right now we are in pinup popper. It's a beautiful machine in the dark. LEDs set it off. As I kind of navigate, you can see like the flipper buttons and all that, the magnet saves, even the RGB flasher row above. And as you can see, the LED matrixes and also the LED rings. Big thing with these like LED matrices and all that, it's basically like zones. Um, you know, you got your LED matrix, then you gotta do a zone for the left rail, a zone for the right rail. I then have a zone for the right speaker. I have a zone for the actual LED ring. I have a zone for the left speaker and then the left ring. These LED matrices are cool, but as you can see, like sometimes in the menu, like this one looks different than this one. I, like I said, you could always fine tune and touch. So like this, for example, as you can see, like this is partially here and this is here. Again, it's not your LED matrices. It's more about, I guess, like the little coatings inside. Um, luckily the customer knows virtual pinball. He's actually been doing it, I believe before even VP nine, he just needed a cabinet. So I think it's awesome. It came out great. Again, the five flasher, same thing in popper menu. And I've done it so many times, like only the four flashers light. for some reason, the fifth one doesn't light. when I turn it off and then turn it back on. Sometimes I even only get the three flashers in the middle. The end ones don't light. So it's kind of like a. I don't want to say the word hit or miss, but in game, it works. It's all about like honestly popper. That's really what I'm getting at. And then also at the top, you could see his custom topper. It does have a light. It is illuminated and you can see the Chevron very cool. So like I said before, I had to give it its own power supply. So I realized it. I didn't realize it in the heat of the moment, but once I got this, I didn't really plug it in. This is like a magnet that's like, you know, keeping the Chevron in place, levitating. But if you sh turn off the power, if I cut the power, that Chevron will drop. It'll drop like a rock. And basically like this magnet is power. It needs power. And originally I was going to put the power supply for that in the cabinet, only have one power input. And then sure enough, I realized that when I killed the power to the cabinet, everything fell and all of a sudden like the Chevron fell and I'm like, Oh crap. So that's why it needs its own separate power supply. He, the customer also likes it because when he turns off the, the pinball machine, that will basically always stay on. So now the topper is very cool. I'll be honest though. We didn't really fully think it through. Um, it is cool. Like when you do like light nudges, you can kind of see it kind of shakes, but if you do an aggressive nudge, I'm going to do it on purpose. Sometimes the Chevron, there you go. The Chevron will catch the magnet. Um, that's like the only thing. There's really no way to like avoid that. That's really like a hard nudge. Like I really kind of pushed the table on that. The only thing that kind of is a pain in the butt is kind of bringing it back. You basically have to hold it like in its correct space. And there you go. So again, you have to really like nudge. I have a very big feeling that the, it's going to happen when the customer plays. I have been playing and it hasn't really hit, but you know, somebody new, they might just kind of really kind of push it but it's definitely cool it's very nice i think it's a great feature so now i'll do some quick gameplay on my personal setup i have four star trek tables 
The first one is Star Trek The Next Generation. Shout out to VPW. They made their own like version with the whole like new colors and all. It's amazing. Honestly, majority of the promo video is that table. I also have an EM table. As you can see, Star Trek, and it's pretty cool. That's the characters on the left side. I have also two stern ones. Now keep in mind, I don't give you the tables. This customer has been with the virtual pinball world and he actually has his own tables luckily, but again, I send these out without any tables. Keep that in mind. I have two sterns. I have regular Star Trek LE and then I have Star Trek Enterprise. Um, I'm gonna launch this one. This one's also great because it is, I'm able to show off the knocker. Now, when it comes to DOF, as you can see, like I said before about the flashers, flashers are good, they work. Every table, it has its own DOF config kind of coding. What am I getting at? Basically, you're gonna see, when I insert a coin on this table, which I'll show you now, that is the knocker, and it's a beautiful sound. That right there is a knocker with its own 48 volt power supply. Beautiful. I'm trying not to push the table, but that Chevron, it's, I feel like it's moving because of that knocker. Now, customer supplied the knocker. He was a little upset that whoever he bought the knocker from did not come with a metal plate, like a metal strike plate. I had a piece of metal lying around. Honestly, I put it, it didn't sound good. That knocker right now is actually hitting bare wood. It's actually hitting the piece of wood that is holding up the beacons and that topper. I think it sounds amazing. Uh, let's, let's rock on, let's play, and we'll show off SSF, the shaker motor, and all that, let's play. Also take a look, like I said, see? Five flashers is good, it's just a pinup menu. Sometimes I have either only the three middle, the first four, or the last four and the first one's out, but that's just popper, but let's rock, let's play. So we got the lights off, I'm gonna first show off pinball. So the blue button in the front, if you hold that, you have to hold that. Your flipper buttons is global volume, that's the actual like windows volume. Your magnet saves is the table volume, which is always at 100%. And then the start and the coin is the actual exciter, so SSF, okay? I have everything right now at 100%. I have enough coins in. This table is cool. I don't know Star Trek, but the modes, it's cool. We're gonna save the Enterprise. Okay, 10 solenoids. Oh, should have nudged. You get us all killed? Sorry. As you can see, this is not color DMD, but I set the DMD to white on this. Very cool. We have to get back to the one car. Oh. Trying to make a ramp. There you go. Let me bring it closer, we'll show off the nudge. We'll save the Enterprise. So we have the ball right there, as you can see, I could nudge. And again, you could set the sensitivity for that. And obviously, I wanna make sure that I have you in frame right there. If I nudge or do it too much, you actually get a danger and you tilt. Was Love it, it worth it? Love it. Lower the volume a little bit. Now also on this table and other tables, it's pretty cool because the graphic is actually on this specific table. That right there is like the actual lock bar like special button. For that I have that set to the launch button. I believe if I hit it because it's lit, it actually does something, I, I lost it now. But as you progress in the game, you basically get it and then it hits like the Enterprise. It's very cool, definitely a very cool table. Again, I was playing this for a while and it's a very, very cool table. 
Oh, awesome. And again, you can hear the, the, the 10 solenoid. You can see the LED matrices going off. Lost it. Awesome, beautiful. So we're gonna exit out. I'm gonna launch real quick the next generation. This is the one that VPW made. Again, my personal setup with the Popper Media, I have some stuff to have the loading screens and such. It's, it's awesome. That KL25Z right in the front, as you can see that nudge, you could adjust the sensitivity on it as well as the tilt. That's a personal thing. That's like, I can always guide you, it's very easy. But the reason I'm launching this, BPW did a beautiful job on this, but that color DMD, oh, it is awesome. It is beautiful. So this is one, as you can see, I'm putting the coins in, but I'm not getting that knocker. That's because it's not coded for it. So I'm gonna bump the volume. Also take a note, look at that. Engage, I wanna make sure you can see it. Yeah, you can see that. So LED matrix spells out engage. I'm gonna do, I wanna do actually um, uh, the launch pro because that utilizes the actual fire button, like I was saying, that lockdown. So let's do launch the, the pro. So you're gonna see, I'm gonna have the opportunity here, it's gonna say fire, and using the launch button, I got fire. So that's pretty cool. Again, you have to use the launch button right down the pipe. Give me the ball back, please. Yes, thank you. Should've nudged. But this table is beautiful, also utilizing just the beauty of the LED matrix stuff. It is gorgeous, it's, it's beautiful. That other stern table, the multi-ball on it was very cool. Like it was awesome. I haven't played this table too much to get like multi-ball. Ah, oh, but it was cool. Just utilizing the beacons and such. Awesome. And as you can see, like right now, not much of the action on the five flashes. Again, every table is different. I'm gonna do the launch probe again. So I'm gonna wait for it. Fire. Okay. And now there's a there's an arrow lit. I have to hit the center there. Oh, I missed. Very difficult, but awesome. Definitely cool stuff. So keep that in mind. Your launch button is your fire button for like you know certain tables and stuff, such as like ACDC, uh, you know the, the cannon launch. That's what you would use. But all in all, it's a beautiful pin. And again, you got the 50 inch QNED. Oh, I gotta hit those three arrows. Let's go. Boom. Oh, too early. Shit. Ah, I lost it. Oh, give me a ball. Oh, I had the opportunity for multi ball. But again, that color DMD on this is gorgeous. That is just a beautiful DMD. Let's see what I do. I gotta aim for the arrows. Five million. Awesome. I don't wanna, I don't want this supposed to be an overview, but so far, it's just amazing. It's awesome. Well, there you guys have it. The 50 inch Star Trek virtual pinball machine officially done. Stay tuned for a very long, full, in-depth, detailed video. We'll talk about everything. I'll even show you the insane wiring just for these RGB flashes alone. As you can see, completely powered down, but that topper is still there and up and such. So again, thanks for watching. Be, be sure to stay tuned for the next video just for kicks because it's the end. Um, I'm gonna catch it. I'm gonna unplug the power and I'm scared, but boom. That is the importance of having its own separate power supply. Whoo, stay tuned for the next one.